Welcome to episode 23 of the Battle Academy podcast. My name is Monica. You may know me in game as Anthissa or on social media as Anthissa21. Thanks for joining me. Now, January is always kind of a lull month in the way of Sylph Arena stuff, so we won't get to that until the end of the month. And last week, I did do a preview a bit about this week's move shakeup that occurred on Monday. So we do have some other interesting information. I will go over the PvP rankings that have adjusted. Otherwise, news-wise, things are kind of slow. There was a bit of an issue with the move shakeup that was occurred that uh, for some reason it got reverted at one point before getting changed back. I don't know what happened there. Maybe there was some kind of bug or glitch that occurred, but uh, who knows? They ended up getting it fixed. And then, of course, in all of this little scuttle or whatever, in uh, giving out the new move sets, somehow Primate, in a glitch, got access to Ice Weather Ball or Fire Weather Ball. One of the Weather Balls. I think it was Water Weather Ball. I'm not entirely sure. But for a span of about 10 minutes, you could TM Weather Ball on a Prime Ape. They eventually got it fixed, and then shortly after getting it fixed, they banned the stinking Prime Ape. Like, what? You cannot use it in any form of GBL whatsoever, and you can also not transfer it to home. So it's basically kind of stuck in Pokemon Go world. Uh, if you can find a use for it, good luck. <laughs> Maybe for raids or gym battles or something, but uh, that's about your best bet there. Other than that, we do know that next week we are getting the Machamp Community Day coming up, and they're introducing now a Roserade for February's Community Day. There is a lot of mumble and grumble over this, as these are not new shinies. These shinies have existed already. We don't know why, they're not going to the next round of starters. I believe Shino was the one that was up. But uh, this is the move they've decided to make. Apparently, Machamp missing out on being a, a community day last year. They decided to make it up for January. Okay, whatever. But uh, choosing Roserade because flowers for Valentine's Day is my only guess there. However, I do know that Roserade is can tend to be a little bit of a surprise in uh, certain battle situations, but I don't think it has anything to do with GBL. However, to sweeten the pot, they've decided to make a little move about it. And now, Roserade, during Community Day, when you evolve Rosalia up to Roserade, it is going to be able to learn both Bullet Seed Fast Move and Fire Weather Ball Charge Move. This is really interesting. Why they've decided to take this kind of move, I don't know. Will this be occurring in the future? Still don't know. But uh, it'll be interesting. StadiumGaming.gg, also known as Go Stadium, has an article up on the Roserade. And uh, they do a nice little breakdown about whether or not Roserade is going to be viable in this setup. So let's take a little look at what they see. For Great League, Roserade draws immediate comparison to Sunny Cherum. Sunny Cherum has shown up to be a pretty good player in certain Sylph meta. So this will be interesting to see the possibility of Roserade working for Sylph League. However, this is for Great League. You don't really see a lot of Sunny Cherum in Great League. And the reason why for that is because of some issues. While it can take a very good matchup against a Lapras versus, say, Sunny Cherum, it does not have the ability to hold up to Ice Beam from Azumarill, a Flash Cannon from Registeel, or a Sky Attack Skarmory. And it's not going to hold up as well, whereas Sunny Cherum can take those hits without issue. It doesn't do nearly as well against fighters either, despite the poison subtyping. Basically, what we're seeing for Roserade in Great League, you're better off using a Sunny Cheerum instead. Now, moving into Ultra League, Roserade gets a better bit of a bump there, especially if you're deciding to go with, especially if you add Grass Knot as a second move. It's going to do a good job taking out some of the Ultra League cores, uh, premier cores that are going to show up, Escavalier Swampert, Venusaur Magnezone, so on and so forth. 
And it can take out Registeel without issue fearing failed baits. So if you're looking for a decent Ultra League Pokemon to kind of fill out things, it could be worth it. So definitely worth considering. Now for Ultra League, they do a comparison versus Venusaur, which is a notable Ultra League Pokemon, especially for Premier. And uh, it'll tell you what it picks up versus what it drops. And it picks up more than it loses. So definitely worth considering. Now, moving into a look at Master League, however, is going to be a little bit tougher. You're going to have to get it built up that high to begin with. Now, an open Master League, not a good idea. Open Master League is going to be rife with XL Pokemon, and the majority of them are going to end up being legendaries. Whether you're used to it or not, just it it is what it is. Premier, however, it's going to take up a couple of wins, Magnezone and Metagross for sure, but it's only going to pick up maybe one or two other wins, and it's basically not going to do as well. So if you're wanting to get a good Rosalia, or if somehow you end up playing that day and you're not really too interested in, but a good IV falls into your lap, you definitely want to at least consider it. Especially seeing as that shiny is so blasted pretty. I love it. So that's just your basic Go Battle League look at uh, the upcoming February Community Day. And uh, if you like this kind of feature where I look at the the PvP viability of Community Day Pokemon, just send me a message on Twitter or through my email, and both of which I will give out that information on after the break and pin it in my uh, podcast description. Just let me know, and I will try and keep that a thing. So... I think it's a, a good thing to definitely kind of uh, go over, especially with uh, no longer seeing the normal Community Day lineup that we're used to. All right, another interesting bit of news from Ghost Stadium is a new resource coming out called Project Grookey. This is an interesting article, and it is an interview with the creator of Project Grookey. It's coming from the Southeast United States, one of the top battlers, Adib Khan. So this is going to be really, really awesome. The project is a real-time multiplayer simulator of Go PvP. So basically, the entire point is to get your battle teams and just to see how well they'll work against others without risking anything. This is basically the simulation style level of Go Battle League that a lot of people are wanting. You want to try out a new team without any consequences to your ranking or your battle sets or whatever. This is going to be the way to do it when it launches. Go Stadium or StadiumGaming.gg is going to have all the information as this comes up. This is going to be really, really cool. They have this wonderful, wonderful interview Uh, I don't know when it's going to go live, but there is a YouTube video you can watch. Definitely going to link to this in the podcast episode description if you guys want to take a look at it. And I'm going to link it, of course, on Twitter as well. So this is going to be a wonderful new thing coming up. Everybody's been wanting an unranked PvP in Go Battle League. Well, this is the closest we're going to get to it for now. The one thing that I am going to point out from this interview, uh, it was done by community manager Rambling Rabbit. So if you're interested in uh, getting any more information about it, I think he's going to be the one to to keep up with it. I'm not entirely sure. But um, the creator has stated that is going to be their New Year's resolution. So they want to have something usable within the year. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm excited. This is going to be really cool. You can sign up for the notification list in this webpage. Uh, they has been posted to Reddit. So if you know anything about it on Reddit, definitely take a look there as well. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a really, really awesome resource. I, I'm excited for it. It'll be interesting to see what happens when it finally goes live. Definitely take a look at that video, read through the interview, and uh, if you're interested, which I know a good number of people are going to be, definitely sign up for the notifications. All right, I am going to call that about uh, the halfway point. At this point in time, things are just kind of moving slowly, and uh, 
I'm going to take a break for myself, get me some water and whatnot. And after the break, the usual shameless self-promotion, I will learn to say that. And then we're going to get into the new setup on the rankings and take a better look at how that Jellicent and whatnot, the uh, Jellicent and Frillish look in the Go Battle League rankings for PvP, uh, pvpoke.com. Pardon me in my excitement. I'm, um, I will learn to speak. I'll be back in just a minute. get back to it shall we and as always shameless self-promotion time if you're interested in listening to this podcast in other places just out of curiosity if you're interested in that you can always find battle academy podcast my sister podcast as well and that is katan public radio on my red circle webpage. I usually link to that directly through my Twitter whenever I post a new show. My Twitter, of course, is anthisa 21 If you're interested in any of my weird takes or whatnot, just shoot me a message there. I definitely am interested in receiving communication of any kind. Questions, comments, constructive criticism, I am open to it all. If you're interested in AR, any of the Pokemon Instagram photos that I've got. You can check out my Instagram. It is anthisa.21. I try to post on a regular basis. And uh, thank you guys so much, all of you that are there that follow me. And uh, forgive me for saying, guys, I'm still working on that one. It slips in every so often. Beg my pardon. And beg your pardon. (coughs) You can also send me an email at anerdblog at gmail.com if you're interested in saying anything to post on the show. You can also catch me on Twitch. I'm supposed to have been streaming last week. Unfortunately, still figuring things out and bouncing everything out. I try to be on when I can, Monday, Wednesday, Friday nights. Uh, Unfortunately, it hasn't happened again recently. I do need to do some updates and stuff, but I will try to get back to streaming on a regular basis, I think, next week. So please look out for me then if you're interested in uh, watching anything that I'm playing. I do some Pokemon Sword and Shield, but I'm a Nintendo variety streamer. I do some Zelda, some uh, Smash Brothers. I also do a little bit of of Marvel Avengers on Xbox. I do want to get into playing some Assassin's Creed as well. My brother bought Valhalla and I, I've been dying to play it. I also do need to p- finish Odyssey as well though. But uh, yeah, if you're interested in catching me at any of those places, by all means. And if you happen to walk in to uh, my Twitch stream at random, by all means, chat with me. I, I want somebody to talk to me when I'm streaming on Twitch. Please talk to me. I am a little weird, uh, just in case you didn't know. (laughs) You can also check out my merch at teespring.com slash store slash Pegasus Podcast and Gaming. I realize, yeah, that having the merch is not really a thing, but uh, I set it up anyway, whether you guys were interested in not. I am trying to do it as a way to keep the show going or kind of, I don't know, the ultimate dream everybody wants to do. Make money at something you love. I love being on the podcast. I love doing this. I love playing games. So if you're interested in supporting me monetarily, that's perfectly fine. But um, just the fact that you're listening to the episode or popping in to say hi on Twitch, that means more to me than you know. A follow on Instagram, a like on whatever. I I don't, just your support means a lot. I don't have to have money for it. Just that you guys are enjoying this content means the world to me. And let me know if you're enjoying the content. If you have an idea for something you want me to cover, by all means, tell me, let me know. I am also trying to get to the point where I'm collaborating more with other Pokemon Go content creators and, um, I've had some opportunity, excuse me, opportunities to do such, and I am grateful for them. So, um, if you did not see it, there is a Pokemon Go content creator video for New Year's and the holidays, just basically where a whole bunch of us got together, took some time out of our day, shot a little one minute clip, and it was all put together by an amazing person on the interwebs known as Tarsh the Maori. 
And uh, thank you so much for putting that together for us and organizing it and editing it all together. It means a lot to us. So uh, if you did or did not see that video, I hope you get a look at it. Um, just so you know, we all appreciate the support that you guys give us. The fact that you're watching our stuff, liking it, and communicating with us means more than anything else you will ever know. So, so for sure, check that video out. All right, I think that's enough of me rambling like an idiot. So uh, let's get on to looking at the brandy new setup for the pvpoke.com rankings. The number one overall ranked Pokemon is Metacham XL. This is weird. I'm not used to Azumarill taking a second place spot. Azumarill XL is number two. Galarian Stunfisk is still a top three contender. Shadow Swampert, Azumarill, Swampert, Politoed, Shadow Politoed, Diggersby XL, Bastodon XL, Lickitung XL, Scrafty, Wabuffet XL, Shadow Machamp, Deoxys Defense Form, Mew, Sableye XL, Registill, Altaria, and number 20, the brandy new Jellicent. So we do have a lead in to see where Jellicent is going to show up, what it's going to be good against, so on and so forth. Despite the move shakeup, we're still seeing some interesting things at the top. We're still seeing the Mud Boys, Swampert, uh, Galarian Stunfisk, Azumarill is still a uh, top Pokemon. We're still seeing plenty Shadow Pokemon show up. However, we are not seeing any of the Grass Holes show up. Until number 22 when we get to Shadow Obama Snow. Chestnut comes in at number 23. Meganium 24. Surf Fetched is number 25. Between Jellicent and Obama Snow, Rainy Cast Form. Still, that, that one's really, really interesting. Because the cast forms are kind of, um, I don't know. I've never really considered them to be a top tier. But now seeing Rainy Cast Form, I guess with, uh, water weather ball being updated or what have you it should be interesting altaria is still a top 25 pokemon a top 20 pokemon as well as uh obama snow as well chestnut is showing up a little bit higher than i expected however we're not seeing any of the other usual meta culprits masterminds i don't know i don't see shadow Vil victory bell i don't see shadow vile plume in fact, Tropius is number 47, Venusaur is 32, the Grass is few and far between, Shadow Venusaur doesn't show up until 57. So the move shakeup did a number on the usual Grass Holes, Bell Awesome as no, at number 80, and that's not even the Shadow form. So it did its damage, things have happened, Shadow Bell Awesome doesn't show up till 104. This is interesting to see what has happened here. Metacham sitting at number one is interesting. Now, this, of course, is just the overall rankings. For your top lead-out Pokemon, Metacham XL, Shadow Swampert, Jellicent in the number three spot, and we will get looking at Jellicent a little later. Galarian Stunfist still maintains in top five, despite the nerf to Rock Slide. So this is interesting. Shadow Machamp at number six, Scrafty at five, Azumarill doesn't show up till number seven, and it's XL Azumarill, of course. Azumarill itself doesn't show up till 11. Primeape with uh, Night Slash and Close Combat at number 14. <laughs> no Weatherball Primeape here, sorry. Mantine, Politoed, Shadow Form, Suicune, you're still not seeing any of the Grasshole culprits. Taking a look at closers, your top five, Shadow Electrovire, Shadow Raikou, Azumarill, Azumarill XL, and Lantern. Again, I'm not seeing, well, Chestnut and Shadow Venusaur at 14 and 15, but uh, again, we're not seeing any Razor Leaf users coming up. Uh, Meganium at 29, Ferrothorn and Shadow Obama Snow at uh, 32 and 33 respectively. It is interesting. Shadow Weeping Bell. This is the first time I've seen it. It shows up at 51. Yikes. The, the shakeup did what it was supposed to, even though I am still seeing on Twitter where people are saying the meta hasn't really changed. Your switches, top five, Mew, Metacham XL, Stunfisk Galarian Form, still showing up top five. 
XL Sableye, and Pelipper. Number seven for Galvantula, it's taking a slide on a lot of things. For your attackers, I'm going to not worry about chargers. Attackers XL Wabuffet, Bastodon XL, Azumarill XL, Diggersby XL, Jellicent. Jellicent could prove to be a very interesting new um, wrench in the meta. So we'll definitely be looking at that later on. Overall consistency. Ooh, this is definitely a shakeup I was not expecting. Duot. I have never seen Duot show up in the uh, Great League rankings for anything before. Dunsparce, Basculin, never seen it. Shadow Scyther, Ponyard, Parasect, Scyther, Nidoking, Sandy Worm Adam. That's, that's different. And Shadow Nidoking for your top 10. And that's just all your top 5 to 10 in each of the pvpoke.com rankings except for Chargers. And man, you don't see any of the usual grass holes showing up. The nerf to Razor Leaf was hard. Jeez. I'm betting you people are still using them though. So just because it doesn't show up in the top 20 to 25 in the rankings, don't expect people to not use it. The rankings, of course, are just like a guidelines to use as you go about building your team for these events. Now, of course, as promised, let's take a look at Jellicent, your Pokemon of the week. I will not be doing another um, AP Battle Academy this week. I will eventually get back into doing those as well. All right, for your Pokemon of the week, Jellicent. Your recommended move set is Bubble, Bubble Beam, and Shadow Ball with the boost, the um, the boost to Bubble, or what? I forget if it was a boost or a nerf. I think it might have been a nerf. I don't know, but it still shows up as a decent Pokemon to use in the top 25 at least. Now remember, you can't get Frillish, the base form of Jellicent, until you hit rank 19 or 20 in Pokemon Go Go Battle League. So you can't just get this thing in the wild. So if you want it, you're going to have to work at it. It's going to take key wins against Azumarill, Galarian Stunfisk, Alolan Marowak, Skarmory, and Bastodon. Losses are against Altaria, Obstagoon, Abomasnow, Scrafty, and Wigglytuff. Your fast moves available are Hex and Bubble. Preference right now is leaning towards Hex, especially after the nerf to Bubble. Charge moves are Shadow Ball, Ice Beam, and Bubble Beam. Preference is going to Shadow Ball and Ice Beam. Ice Beam is definitely worthwhile. So there are 19% of people using Bubble Beam, but uh, it, it's kind of odd. Bubble Beam is your recommended, but it's not your top preference. That's one of those things that happens. It is a primary water secondary ghost type with weaknesses to dark, electric, ghost, and grass. But look at the resistance list. Normal fighting, water, steel, poison, ice, fire, and bug. And some of these are double resistance. Now you've got your basic resistance against normal and fighting, the 0.39. Whereas, oh, excuse me, I'm reading it backwards. <laughs> this is the damage it takes versus damage dealt. Uh, for weakness, it's damage it takes. For resistance, is, I'm reading it wrong. It's double resistances are going to be to normal and fighting. However, it does have resistance to water, steel, poison, ice, fire, and bug, which is still good. But having those double resistances is really nice as well, especially with Metacham being at the top of the, the ranking list. For a rank one PvP J Frillish, or Jellicent, so you can build your Jellicent. Frillish, so you can build your Jellicent. Whatever. <laughs> You're looking for a level 24 and a half with an IV spread of 1, 14, 14. This is going to be an interesting little Pokemon. Plus, it looks really pretty, too, once you get it. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, of course, am hoping that maybe they'll eventually do a release in the wild for it. Who knows? We'll see. It's an interesting Pokemon. I am going to try and bust my butt to see if I can hit rank 20 before all of this goes to pot at the end of the season in March. We shall see. We shall see. 
Hopefully I can get my hands on one. It's my new rufflet. I finally managed a rufflet, so Frillish is my new rufflet. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope it helps you in your team building and whatnot. And uh, I will see you all next week. Have a wonderful time of day it is wherever you're at. I'll see you then.